Welcome to Conversations with Karen, whereby I have weekly conversations with you regarding life and unlocking your full potential to possibly shift, change, and grow through our conversations. Today, I have a guest with me, Prakashi Naidu, who also goes by the name of Prax, which we will be calling her today. Um, she's an intuitive spiritual coach and mentor, and also teacher, a spiritual teacher. So welcome, Prax, to today's conversation. Thank you, Karen, for having me. It's always great to be here. Yes, welcome. Won't be our first. <laughs> <laughs> Today's yeah. conversation is about awakening your purpose, your soul's purpose. In other words, if you say, what's that? Your true self. It's already within us, not so. So, you know, people are so distracted by their thoughts, so identified with the voices in their head, they can no longer feel the aliveness within them. Hi, I'm Karen Kelly, a transformation coach, assisting you to unlock your full potential. Are you feeling stuck in your thoughts? Then continue to watch conversations with me. Your soul's awakening is literally when your soul is awakened to new experiences in your life. It can often come at a shake-up in your life or with something, um, something laying dormant within you unconsciously has become conscious suddenly to you. This is where you begin awakening to who you are as your unconscious becomes conscious and you begin to shift from self to soul. It can come, for example, at a time when you reach a crisis point in your life where your soul is yearning for, for deeper meaning and connection to the world or with this world. You might perhaps begin to look not only for substitutes for that natural state of well being within, but also for something to cover up the conscious unease. <clears throat> Warning that you feel when you are not in touch with your aliveness. That is always there, that usually is overlooked. We're always covering up. Layers of dust. Your old self is where you are living by the conditions of the environment at which you live and grew up in. So in essence, this is where you are living by conditions of the ego. And your ego from a psychological perspective is the conditions that have been placed on you by, for example, society the culture at which you live in. You could say you are living by conditioning and not by your true self or true soul's essence, by conditioning. So what is not yours inside of you? Is your old self serving you on your journey? I'm asking you that question. Is your old self serving you on your journey? Answer that, look within yourself. Is it allowing you to awaken to who you truly are? Your soul's essence. Awaken your purpose. Your soul's purpose. I'm sure you're itching on that one, Prax, because Prax has been wanting to do quite a few talks on souls, your soul's awakening. And in her teaching, she actually talks about your soul's awakening. Hey, perhaps? Yes, you know, um, yeah, we all want to awaken, but yes, there's the whole power struggle of, do, of, do we really have the perseverance to push through those difficult times? 
that we face through the awakening. Because everybody right now, and it seems to be very cinematic, that everybody wants to be awoken, since we all are going into this 5D reality, which is so fabulous. Uh, but, you know, what people don't realize is there's a lot of work that's going to be done. And that's why coaches are there, like you, Karen, and myself, so that we can actually help the process. So for that person to align with their purpose and help them see the shadow aspect of themselves, the more darker side of the ego, or things that we never considered to be a negative ego pattern. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what I feel uh, we need to be addressing because people think, you know, it's so fabulous to get in touch with your third eye awakening. I mean, that's a new fashion statement, actually. I don't know. Everywhere you see, everybody's opening up third eyes and we all going to ascend and we're all doing all great, fabulous things. What's the part they forget to tell you is it's a process and it takes a lot of work. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and that's say, why people. Yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I get excitable. <laughs> you were saying it's all good. It's cool. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to chirp you and say that's what I always say. Get aligned with the outer world and inner world. Don't you imagine opening up your senses and what have you, and then suddenly you've been bombarded with whatever comes your way. It's like <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. So, and you're so correct in that. You know. Because everybody wants to live in this whole thing. Oh, you know, everybody's like, no, we do hold no harm. We all about love and light. But guys, you know, the whole thing is we do have our shadow aspects. And that shadow aspect is our anger, our resentment for things which happened a long time ago, the unforgiveness. You've got to go deep within you to actually work through it Turn in it. order for you to become this enlightened being that we all are striving towards. Totally agree. Let's let's touch on the ego, but because you know, one would think I don't have an ego. Um, how can ego come into this? Um, so let's touch a bit on ego because sometimes it is misplaced. So what does ego mean? I mean, you can go Google it. You can go look in the dictionary. So according to research, your ego is your your conscious mind, the part of your identity that you consider yourself. If you say someone has a big ego, then you are saying that he or she is too full of themselves. Yet, yet. The ego is also what ensures our physical survival. How's that for you? A good ego, a bad ego, a high vibrational ego, and a low vibrational ego. The ego is the source of the fight, flight, or freeze survival mechanism that convinces us to run when facing a wild, charging animal. For these reasons, we depend on our ego as well. However, it's when ego gets in the way of our growth when it becomes problematic. Deep-seated sense of dissatisfaction, of incompetence, of not enough, um, I don't have enough yet, um, I'm better than you. Um, and, and this bit I find so interesting, my listeners, and Prax will agree, she, I mean, we, then we in harmony in that one, is ego, with all of those examples I gave you, guess what it's saying? I am not good, I am not enough yet. So, you know, I am not enough yet, and thinking that you want to awaken your soul's essence and be your true self, but you're thinking, oh, I'm not good enough yet. Ego. I mean, I don't know if you want to, if you'd like to talk more on this ego, Prax, um, because I have a question for you about self-inquiry and your awakening experience. Okay, well, I'd just like to elaborate a little bit more on the ego and then we can go into the self-inquiry. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, our negative ego is usually the negative self-talk we talk to ourselves. Yeah. The one that we put ourselves into the corner where we believe 
we basically put all these self-imposed limitations on ourselves. But when we walk into a place and maybe I looked at you and said, wow, Karen is such a beautiful woman. She's got such a beautiful body. And then I look and think, oh, you know, like, hmm. And then I look at myself and I'm like, oh, you know, you're so small. I wish you could be bigger. I wish you could be. That's automatically my negative ego talking. It's got nothing to do with the Karen. It's got everything to do with me. So that's how we, and that's the part we neglect to understand. That is our negative ego talking in that point. And then we become imposters to ourselves in our own lives. Exactly. We literally walk around being pretentious of who we think we are or what society is expecting from us. Yeah. Which, in, in, which actually um, suppresses the self-awakening. Um, self-inquiry, you know, the, the phrase or the phase of self-inquiry is where you come to terms with your awakening experience as you question the situations around you and also question life itself. Sure, Karen, I have to say, I totally would say the self-inquiry process is a very painful one, a very shocking one. You literally tear yourself to pieces and like you don't really identify at times with who you are. Yep. A life you once knew is no longer exactly what you thought it was. You question everything. You know, in my journey, I mean, in 2000, I had a near-death experience and I went into the light. And I was obviously nurtured back into this realm of life. And I was told, you know, you, you're not ready yet. You need to come back. You need to teach and help and do whatever you're doing. So I was like, but I don't want to. I said, but you have to. And I was like, and ever since then, you know, your life literally is all about searching within yourself and finding that balance, which sometimes is so, so chaotic. And I'm sure you can identify with it and the viewers can too. You know, sometimes like it's one trauma after the next, after the next, and you are sitting there and you're thinking like, what the heck? Why? <laughs> like, I just with it. And then you think you dealt with it, and what? There we go again. It's like, ugh. There this goes is just the money. <laughs> exactly. And you know, everybody just gets this whole idea that, you know, to be an awakened being is so simple. My awakening process has been a very painful one. I mean, there's nothing being easy about it. And I always say, you know, to my students and to a lot of people, clients, whatever. I always say, you know, it's good and well to awaken. But are you ready to take responsibility for that awakening? Are you ready to go through that sleepless nights? Are you ready to actually have the dark night of the soul? Yeah. It's when you are literally down on your knees and there is nowhere else to go. There's nothing more to grab onto but your true self. And then you ask yourself, who am I? Really? Who am I? Is this really who am I? You know, that kind of thing. And you sit and you look at yourself and you're just like, why me? Then we go into that victim mentality of the lower ego because then you become the victim to life. Because why do I need to go through all the shifts and changes and pain and suffering? But the, the good side of it is it does have a very, very beautiful part to that awakening. So guys, I'm not trying to scare you all out of your awakening process. Uh, there is a lot of positives that come off it. You know, being able to help yourself and helping everybody else, empowering somebody else's life just by that awakening within yourself, being able to see life in a whole different way. You know, I mean, that it, it has its tears. As I say to my students, I hope you're ready for the growing pains. But, you know, you can always do things like to aid yourself is like try meditations, connect with the higher self, you know, the true self, the one which is not controlled by our ego or by the outside world. And that's part of our awakening, like meditations and grounding exercises and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which we will obviously touch on before we end. Yeah. Do you know, I, I did a talk last week about um, why play is with is important in adults and incorporating play within your growth process when it does get uncomfortable is imperative. Um, it can possibly make your journey possibly in some cases gentler. 
And as, as you were saying, Prax, when clients come and see me, before they actually come and see me, I say, are you ready to do the work? Number one. Number two, are you prepared to get uncomfortable? Because if you're not prepared to do either of those two, then don't come and see me. You're not ready. I'm not that rude. <laughs> you're not actually ready. <laughs> you're not ready for the process with me, that is. Um, yes. So I've got something buzzing here. So I'm about to actually buzz off it. Is that, <laughs> you know, it is natural for you to go through a period of denial. It is natural. It's okay. As you have never been faced with these experiences before, and you may not know of others who have been through events like you've been through. Yeah, and, definitely. And, and self-inquiry is where you begin. <laughs> that sounds actually negative, but self-inquiry is where, like practice was saying, where you begin to doubt yourself which can lead to repressing your emotions and forming your shadow self. That's how your shadow, when people talk about their shadow self, that's what it actually means. And mm. your journey is to embrace what is being revealed to you rather than suppressing it as this will allow you to begin, to begin the enlightened in process on your journey and the process to greater ease. So the more, I did it, in my perception, the more you fight it, the more you resist it and repress it, repress it, the more difficult the process is, the more uncomfortable it is. Um, I talk from personal experience, and I'm sure Prax can tell you first from personal experience personal experience I might we might be teachers and coaches but don't think we don't fight it we sometimes don't even realize our conscious mind is fighting it and we go through quite a stormy couple of days until we actually start to embrace and then it becomes a memory we can actually talk about we can't even remember quite the difficulty if only we hadn't suppressed it or fought against it. That's when, sorry, Karen. That's when the surrender comes in, right? <laughs> so the surrender is there, and uh, the whole idea is about being in the now. And with my personal journey, it's been a very rocky road. I call it a roller coaster ride that I never signed up for. So I think, <laughs> and uh, you know, I had some serious medical issues that came through in my family life uh, last year and me being who I am I was literally gutted by that event and it took me right down into the pit of my soul and I questioned absolutely everything about my belief about all that I do about all that I help about all that I teach and I and I felt helpless like beyond helpless. And that's okay. And then I had to come to sorry, Karen. I said, and that's okay, the process you went through. Yes, you know, we had to feel. And you were also there on the line just think to me. <laughs> you know, it's all about the feelings and you have to dive into it as much as it hurts and as much oh. as it was awful. And the thing is, there is no quick fix. And guys, if you think there is a quick fix then you need to try another journey because there's definitely no fix, uh, quick fixes in this. You just got to basically come to resolve. We have to feel, understand and move forward. You know, I mean, my life I thought was quite okay until eight years ago, my life literally came crashing down around me. And I was like, I never signed up for this. I just had a wonderful life and everything. I had my rose painted glasses on. And the sunshine was outside and I had my margarita in my hand, just having a fabulous life. Until life sent me the curveball. And then I was like, oh my God, what just happened here? My whole world was just taken from under my feet. And I was like, now what? 
I had to reinvent myself. I had to rediscover myself and the actual courageousness and strength that I have within myself. And then once again, I questioned my journey. And I just thought, you know, I've coached, I've helped, I've taught, I've helped people rectify their own lives. And here I'm sitting with a mess. And you know what? Eight years later, I'm like still cheering on and I've been through it. And guys, you all feel that exact same way where you feel like you can't take another step forward. You can't take another breath. It just hurts too much. Well, the good news is you're going to move past it and you're going to look back at that and think like, nah, why was I just carrying on so much? I was being such a drama queen because we all do that when we're feeling in a negative space. Do you know... One of my, by the way, it only hit me now. You say eight years ago, you had that experience. Mine was also eight years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. When I experienced, well, you know what I experienced. There's no yeah. time right now to actually share it because otherwise we're going to go over time. Is okay. um, ask yourself values in your life, core values. Values in your life are important, but the core values in your life is who you are and what makes you up, what makes you breathe, what makes you get out of bed in the morning. And you need to actually ask yourself, what is my top number one core value? You might be feeling uncomfortable, restless, stuck in your thoughts, unhappy, whatever it actually might be, or in a turmoil. I mean, I speak on perhaps and on my behalf, you know, when we become aware of something, we realize, oh, sherbet, we're living an anti-core. We're actually not living to our true self. For example, what do I mean by that? Freedom is my number top one core value. Now, freedom means different things to everybody. Freedom means for me, I'm very expressive. And freedom means to me to be able to take those thoughts that I'm having and be able to articulate them with emotional intelligence, but articulate them without being pushed down but without being saying, you're not saying it correctly. Don't say it like that. Um, you need to conform this way. The way I teach and the way I coach, and that's why I call myself a transformation coach. I incorporate life coaching, yes, in my transformation coaching, but I go way beyond and far deeper with play in it. Don't tell me a coach doesn't do that. You need to conform. You need to do this way. I need to be able to express myself when I want to express myself. And, and because I'm very passionate and expressive. <laughs> and then sometimes there you are. <laughs> and then sometimes I'm actually very subdued. On video, for example, on a webinar. So whatever the calling is, whatever I'm feeling is what you will actually receive. Don't push me down. You're too aggressive on the screen. You're too this, you're too that. I then begin to feel caged. But at the time, one doesn't know that. When you're feeling unhappy, you're feeling, you're feeling um claustrophobic, you're feeling restless, you're feeling not yourself, you're feeling you put on weight, um, a whole a whole lot of things. I mean, I'm sure Prax gets that. And then you have to ask yourself, what is my true essence? What is my soul's purpose? What is my soul's purpose? What my soul's purpose is, is to spread love, to spread healing, to spread change, to spread transformation. And if I'm going to get caged, What's going to happen to me? How, how do I feel? I'm not living my true essence, my true self. And what Prax was actually saying as well, what she went through eight years ago and what 
as we go through our journey, we have those uncomfortable moments and those terrible moments and whatever it might actually be. It's because we're not living our truth. And even in these difficult times, I'm actually talking over time here because now practice triggered something and I'm in a long conversation. <laughs> I mean, even in these times that we are living in, now's the time to actually say, oh, I want to awaken. But what is my true soul's essence? What is my truth? Yes, in the process, it's going to get awakened. But what is my true purpose and my soul's essence and my truth now, during this time that we're going through, during, during this time that I'm busy struggling? What is it? I think I've spoken too much. So, <laughs> hey, Prax, I think I've just had it. Yeah, well, <laughs> And it's usually in the good times that we're all floating through life. And we never look at that actual that trigger when it happens. I mean, only when it hits us and then our whole world comes crashing down. Because we're not in touch with what really is our true purpose. Our life is designed around everybody else's needs, everybody else's wants. We are generally right at the bottom of the list. I know, I've talked from experience as well. You know, I've done this. I've done it plenty of times in my life where I've literally made me the bottom person right at the end. And I put everybody else's needs and stacked it above me. I wasn't living my purpose. But you know what helped? And I'm just going to suggest to you guys is heart coherence. Going into the now. Just like put your hand over your heart and just breathe in and just become centered into your heart. And you know what? Your heart never lies. <laughs> it, it's the one organ in your body aside from the brain and the solar plexus which is your the ultimate guide as well yeah your stomach um, you get that icky feeling in the stomach yeah you know that gut instinct yeah you never and you know they always say a woman has this woman lady's instinct kind of thing you can never lie to a female because she can feel it yeah just like that our hearts you can't lie to it so by doing the, the exercise I'm presenting to you guys is a heart coherence. So you basically would put your hand over your heart, do in some nice comforting breaths, breathe in, breathe out, and then ask yourself, who am I? What is my purpose? Is this mine or is it somebody else's? And that truth will be revealed to you. And also, you know, part of that process is journal. Journal everything that comes through that heart coherent process. And that's my word of advice to each and every one of you that want to walk this journey of awakening to your truth and your life's potential. You know, I always say uh, on my last note of speaking, because I think we definitely over time, um, you know, we all are celestial beings having a worldly experience. And in this worldly experience, we all get so segmented because of the outside interferences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's always a hana, hana, hana. And it's always like, you're not good enough. Oh, but that teacher told me all the to nothing. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then we just go on. Yeah. You yeah. know that word, Karen. I know it all too well. And I'm sure the audience knows it as well. You know, but going into your heart, will never lead you astray. And trusting that and journaling. And that will be one of the ways or a few ways that you can actually guide yourself into knowing the truth. Karen? So some of the tools that I'm going to part with you, and I hope you listen to those what Prax gave you. If you don't, rewind and write down some of those tools that she actually gave you and part it with you. Um. One of the tools, I'm going to come back to your aligning with your core values. So, because whenever you are out of alignment with the present moment, it means you're not in an alignment with your core value, the true you. Um, to actually find out what they are. I'm a phone call away. Obviously, there's an energy exchange, but reach out 
as I said in the beginning of our conversation, we, I mean, we can talk for hours on this subject. Seriously, it actually takes a series. I mean, it takes coaching with me for eight sessions. It takes coaching with, with um, Prax to get to a point. As you said in the very beginning, it's not the flash of a click of a finger that you actually changed. And trans- actually, we do change every single day. We do change every single second. We're getting older, we're losing skin, we whatever it actually might be, but actual transformation takes time bodybuilder or guy goes into the gym he doesn't walk out with a six-pack it takes time for him to transform and it's like you take it takes time to change your blueprint so is that the present moment the now ask yourself do you want the present moment to be my friend or my enemy? The present moment is inseparable from life. Think about that. So you are really deciding what kind of relationship you want to have with life. Your soul's purpose. Once we've decided that we want the present moment to be our friend, it is up to us to make the first move. Become friendly towards it. Embrace it. Welcome each, no matter in what dis- disguise it comes. And soon you will see the results. Life becomes friendly towards you. People become helpful circumstances cooperate try that exercise one decision changes your entire reality so the most important the primary relationship in your life is your relationship with the now within you my prax. Totally agree with you here, Karen, because the relationship with yourself is that which is going to take you and open you up to, you know, I always use that the world is your oyster. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you can do however, but it just takes some discipline. Yeah. Yes. And, and um, perseverance. Don't don't give up. You know. So when you start exactly, giving up, exactly. don't give up. Just how does it saying go from Nemo? Glory or glory, Gloria, whatever her name is, um, on Nemo. Just keep going. Just keep going. I've been watching Nemo, so I can't help you there. <laughs> so she, uh, glory. she always loses the memory. She just keep going. So yeah. Prax before we end. Is there anything extra you would like to add before we end? Be authentic to you. Listen to that inner voice and the guidance system. You can hear other people, but that ultimate decision and that choice is ultimately yours. So you can have 10,000 practices and 10,000 Karens, but you know what? What comes here, and if it resonates here, and you feel it, then you must know that's something to pursue and move forward with. You know, we are just there to help empower you guys through our life's experiences, through those negative ones and the positive ones. What's important is, and Karen, what I would love to share with the audience is, um, have the morning ritual, you know, your bath. Be conscientious, be aware. As you're bathing, you know, just like as you rub it up, dubbing scrubs or however it goes. <laughs> um, so you're basically getting rid of that old cellular memory. You know, as you bath, just like say, okay, I'm clearing, I'm clearing, I'm letting go of all the pre-programming. All the energy and all the thoughts that's not mine. And then obviously doing the heart coherence and journaling is very important. And then you know, guys, everybody needs a life coach. And especially one who can identify. 
and who's walked the journey. You can't go to somebody that's never experienced life and expect them to guide you to the best way that they can because life is all about experiences and we can help you and guide you through the experiences that we've experienced in our lives and we have survived. And you know when those days are there and dark and grim and you feel like I just can't anymore? Look deep within yourself, you can. There's a warrior in each and every one of us. Mm. And that's the last thing I would like to say. And thank you once again, Karen, for having me. You're welcome. And it's always great to be able to help people. And you know, if you take out one nugget, yep. just one nugget of wisdom that we've shared, you've won. Do you know when um, Prax spoke about the rubbing salts or whatever it is on your skin and picturing all the nonsense that you're rubbing off your skin that's attached to you during the day, the negativity, the whatever it actually might be. Use it as play. It's part of your play. You know, playing is important for adults. Use it as part of a play. Instead of saying, oh, it's a ritual, use it while showering as you wash and shine. Just picture all those particles dusting off you as you're busy showering. It's the intent that actually starts working. Your intent, your thought. So, as I said before, that a lot can be achieved through talking, listening, and connecting. So reach out to me or Prax. Our contact details are we on Zoom. So it'll be at the end of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm normally I'm StreamYard and it's normally streaming at the bottom. So my <laughs> question to you is, what is holding you back? Are you feeling stuck in your thoughts in, or in certain areas of your life? What is sabotaging you? Do you want to break them? Then you're in the right place, whereby I assist you to unlock your full potential to shift, change, and grow, transforming the essence of self. discarding or upgrading your past programming that have limited you and held you back. And that can come from room stage, actually. So my question is, who do you choose to be? So perhaps, thank you for being on the conversations with Karen. Thank you, Karen, for having me. I'll stop right there and I will say, remember to hit the subscribe button or the like button if you would like to hear future talks and be safe and be you. Thank you. Thank you.